What is up, everybody? Welcome to The Flip Side, a GYTO podcast where we break down, share, and challenge flip perspectives and insights on different hot topics in education. We are so excited for another episode. I am joined by Chris and Wade. Yes, you are. Say hello. I'm Wade. Hello. When you, said, when you said hot topic, I was thinking hot pockets, Ooh, as you said hot yeah. topic. So. When you said hot topic, I thought about the, the store, store. Yeah, but she's saying it like the hot pocket, Jake. Anyway. Right. I got my eyebrow ring sure. wrong. Insights on different hot pockets in education. <laughs> I do <laughs> love hot pocket, <laughs> too. I've never had a hot pocket, I don't think. Oh, my gosh. Well, yeah, we, we got to talk one. about it. You know, <laughs> there is definitely a flip side perspective on hot pockets, but we are so excited to have you for another episode. We have an incredible educator joining us today on the flip side couch here in the studio, Megan Churchill. And we are going to be talking about all things that teachers wish parents knew. So this is part of our series about what teachers wish parents knew, what parents wish teachers would know, and what students wish teachers knew. Yeah. So we are so excited about this series and we cannot wait to dive in today. So let's get it started. Let's go. Wait, here's the icebreaker. For this one? Wait, shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, shirt. It's breaking the ice. It is him. It's breaking like, the that ice. That is the style. It and is Chase like. Chase told him that he looks like his grandma's Afghan. Like a quilt. Like a quilt. But that, and I was like, well, if Chase doesn't like it, then you are on trend. That Cause. looks, to me, it looks more like doilies, like. Stitched if you together. are not watching Boilies. on YouTube, Wade has a um, crocheted. Crocheted, shirt. hand knitted by Pamela <laughs> Wheeler herself. Crochet. Hey, you know what? Taylor Swift wore a crochet dress. It's and studded jeans. I mean, it is, a, is it is in. it is a vibe for sure. And this is a great day because I've, I've got a Dunkin' Coffee. Same. You're going to hear so me drink good. it because I'm not going to let it sit here and melt down. This episode is sponsored by Dunkin'. No, just He's kidding. run on Dunkin'. I wish. All right. Anyway. All right. Let's All get right. into it. So um, I, I've got a... Uh, I know that we watch a lot of the same movies, uh, but we also do we though? <laughs> but we also don't. I mean, sometimes I mean, you watch like Love Island. You two have no perfect choice. Perfect Match. Those are shows, not movies. Oh. Yeah, that's not a movie. Okay. Well, I don't know. Okay. I think we kind of do, but maybe like in our childhood. Yeah, maybe. But but not like like a common movie. Oh, like, whatever. Like we don't have a common brand that we all watch. Okay. Together. Okay. We all watched it. Okay. So um, what I have here is. 10 movie quotes and I want to see oh, which one I, know, literally I think I could I think I could do this worst at I hope, think hope is not very this yeah. is a real thing about I always want to win she is she doesn't she watch so movies competitive, but she is she terrible watch movies. at games that require I thinking so bad at trivia she really is smart? no 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 you're very smart and you're very competitive but you are not or you're not that great at games that require thinking I on the spot I prefer creative of correct <laughs> yeah like anytime on a live and we have to do a game, hope is like uh, uh, I can't. So I don't think I can think. We're athletics. She, I really in the, in the moment. Yeah, that, yeah. Mm -hmm. She. Well, does, but I, yeah. I think I think you guys might be up. So these these are top ten. Okay. And I may throw some random of life. There. Um, of top movies. 10. Who said it? I top ten movies. It's nothing like old timey movies. No. Way. I mean, I kind know. kind of. But I think you'll get these. Okay. Yeah. So I think when I get them too. when you think you know it, I want you to raise your hand like this. Boom. Oh man, we need buzzers. I know we do, man. Maybe next time. Okay. okay. Yeah. If you know, no. You why don't we say it lame? You have to sip your coffee. No, no. We have to no because then they can't see it online. We have to sing something. What can we? We have to say, hot pockets. Like, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I can't. no, no. If you get it wrong, okay. if you get it wrong, you, that's what you're. No, you know you say that. That's if our buzz in. Yeah. Okay, yeah. buzz in. All right, ready. And if, you, and if you're tuning in late, that was in the intro. So <laughs> this is awesome. That. This is it gotten, not random. This is the best icebreaker ever. Good job. Okay, here we go. Team. All right, first one. May the force be with you. Hot pockets. So it's weird because you started singing it first, but you ended at the same time. Well, I was I was holding out the hot of the hot pockets. So I really so whoever you starts want a specific episode, you know. Wh whoever starts singing oh. it first. No, 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 no. Movie. Out of topic outfit. Uh, movie. Star Go ahead. Wars. Star Wars, yes. Okay. Oh, I thought he was gonna say Star Wars episode 72 about the <laughs> the, the conqueror <laughs> divides the galaxy or something. That I would not know. Um okay. random question. LeVar Burton, Star Trek, Star Wars. Star Trek. Yes, sir. Yeah, we go. I right. only know that because of Hope's death. Next one. There's no place like home. Hot, Hot pockets. pockets. She started first. There's no way. Remember, starts first. What's because the replay the, of that? You were not first, but go ahead. I'll give it to you. Heels, I'll give it to the you. The Wizard of Oz. Yeah. yeah, it is Wizard of Oz. You knew that one too. Of course. All right, this one. I'm the king of the world. I'm the king of the world. Oh, I know. I know. Wait. Okay, I'll act out. 
King of the World. Hot Pocket. Titanic. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, I knew it. Yeah, Titanic. Yes. I only oh. knew. I was going to say that oh, on Newsies because there's yeah. a song oh. of that. Poor R.I.P. Jack. R.I.P. Yeah. He, he could have fit on that. Could have fit on that. Could have definitely fit on that. That should be a breaker. Yeah. All right. This one. I don't know if you I don't know if you guys will know this one, but I, you, you, you might. Carpe diem. Seize the day, boys. Make your oh, lives gosh, extraordinary. My dad. Yeah. 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 Great. My dad plays this movie for his runners every single year. I mean, to to hint, like I stand on desks all the time when I teach and chairs. So it's from that movie. Robin Williams. Yes, yes, yes. Robin oh. Williams. Yep. Did you po- tor- 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 poet? Yes, poetry's in there. Yep. Poetry. Uh, God, not. I wasn't born yet. I don't think. Uh, nope. I must have told your poets. All right, you got five seconds. Four. Department of Torture. Three. <laughs> two. <laughs> close. <laughs> That's close. It's Torture but Poets. Dead Poets Society. Dead Poets Society. Yeah. I've never even great, heard of that. Great. I, you would love it. It's mm. really good. Um, next one. Um, it's alive. It's alive. Or. It's alive. It's alive. I ain't got this one. It's a classic. I have no. Is it in black and white? 1931. Yes. Oh, I'm definitely not gonna. It's I in black and white. Yeah. Classic film group. It's Halloween themed. Yes. Hot pocket. Okay. Frankenstein. Yes. Wow. Let's go. Oh, this wow. is the only reason I know that. Universal used to have a Beetlejuice show, and Frankenstein was in it, and that was a lie. I'm, I'm the never, only reason I'm, I got I'm that. Impressed. This one right here. My mama always said life was like a box. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> what is it? Forrest Gump. Yes. <laughs> Mama always said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what That's you right. get. What is your favorite uh, chocolate in a box of chocolates? Oh. It'd have to be something caramel filled. Oh, mine's coconut for sure. Oh. I love I love That's the only worst. I'll eat worst. That. Ooh, the raspberry. Anything besides coconut. The cherry <laughs> for me. Yeah. Oh, I remember Valentine's Day. Every student, every teacher knows this, gets you just the, Aww. all the chocolate little boxes, the tiny little ones, uh, the big ones. And I'm like, it's... if it ain't got coconut, I'm re <laughs> I, like, I like the caramel ones. All right. Anyway, sorry. All right. Um, I'll be back. Oh, uh, oh my gosh, you were so close. She, she said, oh, first. Was, I didn't say she was clapping. She never even said it. This is, oh, go. This is so go. one-sided. You're go. giving it to her because you're married. Go. I'm looking right it's at Terminator. you. Terminator. It is Terminator. I'll give it to you. All right. Um, one or two. One. I know who said it. All I of always them. know the name um, of the movies. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh. That is not how he sounds. <laughs> That's how I sound. Oh, this one right here. Classic. Okay. You're going to need a bigger boat. All right. Classic. You need a, you need a hint. Da, da, da. So Hot Pockets. Yep. Jaws. Yep. Never seen it. That is unfortunate. Oh, my God. I've never seen it. It's the greatest song ever written, and it's two notes. No, I know the song. I know the song. I've been on the ride at Universal when it was up. There's just a theme of Universal. The movie. I guess movies. That makes sense. Most of the movie, you don't even see the shark, and you're terrified of the shark because how Steven Spielberg wrote it, and the whole. Yeah, I think I'm scared of it from being traumatized as a child on the ride at Universal when it was open. It's okay, um, ridiculous. It's so scary. Have you been? Did yes, you, do you remember that it? Happened, that shark. It's so pitiful. I'm now as an adult, but as a child, when the boat is on fire, it is terrifying. <laughs> okay. All right. Next one. Here we go. Margaret and Paul. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> call that. You tore. Probably what, back to the park. What did Nicholas do? Did Nicholas like it or no? Okay. We got. We, all right. We all right. Have time last for family one. history. All right. Um. <laughs> this one right here. Oh, was the last. We're one. not even at ten. No. Not, this is the last one. This is ten. I'll be your Huckleberry. Sounds like a country song. It does sound like, I, I want to say Rascal Fly. I'll be your Huckleberry. <laughs> if it's not, it should be. It's my favorite movie of all time. What? Oh, oh Hot Buckets. Tombstone. Yes, Tombstone. But oh. you want to know. I only knew that because movie. it's his favorite. I have no idea. I've never Tombstone. seen Tombstone. Oh, what does that even mean? Have you seen Tombstone, Chris? No. But you would I, love it. I'm just confused on the quote itself. I'll be I'll be your Huckleberry. What does that mean? It That's means, flirting? So Is that flirting? Doc Doc Holiday, which we went to one of his restaurants in North Dakota that time. Oh yeah. All right. I remember well, that very cheers, well. Guys. Good game. Good All right, good game, good game. Good game. Good game. Cheers. It's time. Into today's episode. Oh, pockets. All right, so this is part one of a three-part series. Megan Churchill, everyone, is here in studio. This is part one of that series. Part two is going to be all about what parents want teachers to know, and then part three is what students want teachers to know. Mm. So we're excited to dive into this conversation. Megan, first of all, Welcome to the Flipside Couch. Thank you. From right here in South Carolina, you got to just drive over from your house. Yeah. So that was pretty convenient. 
Quick drive. Exactly. Tell everyone at home who you are, what you do, a little bit about Megan Churchill. So I'm Megan Churchill. I am here from Anderson, South Carolina. I am starting my 15th year in education. I teach kindergarten here in Anderson at the same elementary school that I went to as a kid. And that's why I started teaching. It is. Yeah, it is. And my first year teaching there was in your student teaching classroom. That's crazy. Really? Then I did you. I did not know that. Uh, So funny, funny side note. (laughs) When we we were at Anderson University, it was college then. Y'all were seniors. I was a freshman. And I would be like, oh, my God, they are so cool. And then when I first went to Nevitt. Who? In college? Yes. Hope and Wade. Hope and wait, and I was like, oh It's because I'm part of Thorns of Glory. That's why. It was college Thorns at of all. Glory. No, was it Hope really? Was there. Seriously, Thorns of Glory. Hope would be there. I would be in the back, and I would be like, they are so cool. Oh. And then when I first started at Nevitt, and oh my God, tell me you live in small town South Carolina. Right? Tell me you live in small, right. small town South Carolina. Because I'm just dying because I know fully what I looked like all through college because I ran cross country and track. So every day <laughs> I was in, like, you radiated. No, I know oh she God. did. She radiated did. from sweat. I'm sure that's. Uh, what it was because I it was never baby. looked good a day in my life in college. My hair was always pulled up. I had on zero makeup. But, uh, that's running running very true because I remember being a freshman in college and like there's those seniors that you don't even really know them, but then you start right. to know. And then we went, oh, Lisa and I went just, to a giant university, so I can only imagine a just smaller scale. Twenty year old hopes bucket. Yeah, that's so amazing. you just have you're money. filling my bucket <laughs> now, so it's fine. <laughs> First that bucket is yeah. That is amazing. So tell us, what would hope you for lunch each day in college? <laughs> that I don't know because I was not a stalker. Uh, just clarify, I don't know. No. But also, I think we miss out on the most important thing about you, which is she should be a personal stylist. Yeah, yes, she should. Really. Literally. Yeah. Always so thanks. 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 Yeah, we, we love having her. She's also a collective girly. Yes. She Always and forever. Just sweat. dreams on top of dreams yes. on top of dreams. <laughs> yes. And you want to see Megan. Megan. This jacket right now. It's got yeah. tassels and stuff. Tune in on YouTube to uh, see the full yeah. fit. Did you bedazzle that yourself? I did. Oh I knew it. I knew it. I my mom is now on this bedazzling kick since um, she hung out with the girls at Nationals and the yeah, Live. She's ready to bedazzle. She's ready to things. bedazzle all the shirts with those big gems like yep. that, like different yep. shapes, all the things. So Let's we love to see it. So if you're not watching on YouTube, you can see the gems on uh, Megan's jacket there. But this episode is all about what teachers want parents to know. Now, this could go a number of different ways in this conversation. Yes. And first, if you haven't listened to one of our episodes before, our goal is to challenge perspectives, offer different insights, different um, perspectives from different people, things there. So nothing is off the table in far as this conversation. And there is no judgment or anything on any sides. It's just to kind of open people's minds to a little bit of right. what we want parents to know specifically in this one, but also what parents want teachers to know in the next one. Yeah, this one. one's going to be a little bit easier to, to digest yes. than oh, the for sure. next episode where we have parents yes. talking about what they want teachers to oh, know. Because then sure. that's where it's on the flip side yeah. to where we have to be more... Because our receptive. audience is primarily teachers only. Yeah, this is going to be more like, yes, we wish every parent would hear this and know this. So this one, just know, is setting you up for next week to be a little bit more open-minded with than hearing from Yeah, people. and there could be a ton of different things. So, Megan, I want to open things up to you a little bit. Talk about, in your classroom, um, what does relationships with parents look like for you? What is that? How, what importance does that hold for you? What do you kind of want to set that tone for at the beginning of a school year, kindergarten? They've never been to school before right. in your circumstance. Right. I'm sure parents are very nervous for the first time sending their kids to school. So what does that look like for that? Um, and not even just parent family connection um, for your students. And for me, let me preface this by saying that I've always taught at Title One schools. So the majority of the kids that I've taught my entire career, they don't look like me per se. And so one of the first things that I think with families that I have to preface is that I'm all in for your kids. Like I'm all in for your kids. I'm all in for your family, whatever that means, however that looks like. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's hard because we live in a society where, number one, we don't want to ask for help. And number two, we always put ourselves into boxes, right? Mm -hmm. So when your kid comes to school, they're just a student or they're just there for that amount of time. But my goal is to show these families, when you're here, you're here no matter what. And when you come into my classroom, you're a part of my family forever, you know? And like, you have to build those relationships. And a lot of times we have to meet people where where they are. Yeah, We don't wanna do that sometimes. 
We don't want to get out of our comfort zone. Yeah. We want to sit where we are. It's comfortable. I don't want to get uncomfortable. I don't want to have uncomfortable conversations, mm -hmm. but they're necessary. Yeah. Um, a lot of times for teachers, I'll have conversations and it's all about, well, I don't want to do that in my room because I don't know anything about that. Well, we have to, one, meet kids where they are. We've already established that, right? Yeah. And two, we have to understand that diversity, it's, it's a good thing. Like in diversity, there's strength. Mm -hmm. Just because you're having a hard time or just because circumstances dealt you a certain amount of cards, it doesn't set you up for life, right? And so just showing parents that like your kid can be successful no matter what. Yeah. And it's all about that relationship. I love that you said meeting um, parents where they're at as well, because I think that is super mm -hmm. important, especially at the beginning of the school year. It's a blank slate. It is, it is. really a blank slate. And you do not know the hundreds of other things that one, that parent had to do to get their child to your classroom that day exactly. on a day-to-day -day basis. Right. Two, the things that they're having to do to support their family, the things that they're having to do just to have a meal on the table at home, just to set them up for success in school that day. Mm -hmm. That looks di very different family to family everywhere. That is no everywhere. different than any building than another. And it's very kind of circumstantial of what that looks like for you and your family of is there two parents? Is there one parent? Is there, how many jobs does each parent have? Are there siblings to help out? Is there someone that they have for support? That's going to look very different for parents in different scenarios. I'm thinking fast forward, me as a soon to be single dad, right. that is going to look very different going into school than a traditional family that may have two parents. Yeah. And what that looks like for me to contribute to my future child in school is going to be different because Absolutely. there is a different kind of balance of what you have to do as a as a human just right. of what you're doing exactly. so talk about what are some strategies that you have for getting to know your families in the beginning of school so you can kind of start setting that foundation of meeting them where they're at so we know that there's your typical like getting to know you forms and like all the things that we want parents to fill out at the beginning of the year right all, but the, form. all, all form. the forms if right? you can stop all, by stations one two and three all the trees and, went exactly. it's beginning of the year school right. forms yeah. right and do a lot of teachers look at those forms? Do they? Wow. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. But instead of asking parents to fill out another form or another stack of forms to get to another child, once those class lists are released, I make phone calls because I make these phone calls throughout the year and I need to build that relationship with you so that when you see my number pop up on your phone, you're not like, oh God, oh, the Churchill's the calling again, right? Yeah. Like what did Johnny do? <laughs> So I want them to see my number pop up and think like, okay, this is a great conversation. Like, right. what is this conversation yeah. going to be about? So I start as soon as those class lists are released and they get those letters in the mail. Hopefully they're excited when they see my name <laughs> on that list. Right. And so I just teacher start, of the year over here. So yeah. <laughs> um, I just start making those phone calls and introducing myself like, hey, I'm Miss Churchill. You're going to get information about me, but I just want to introduce myself to you. Um, if I know the family or know, like have some type of like yeah. weave in, mm -hmm. like I want to go ahead and let them know that. Why? Because that that already starts to build that connection. Yeah. And then I ask them questions and I let them lead the conversation. What do you want me to know? And those are like starting that just real conversation and just letting them know like I'm here to listen because life is all about perspectives. So they could already have, you know, an opinion formed about me based or on, about school or about their in school yeah. yeah, or from their experiences in school, because I do have a lot of young. There's a lot of that. Well. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot yeah. of that. Yeah. Yeah. And they didn't like school or they didn't have that. Like we all know it takes one teacher to make or break us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. You know, and so I want to build that relationship and just let them know, like, hey, I'm listening. I'm here. What can I do for you? What do you need for me? from me before school start. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How can I help? I love that, you know, you do those positive, we call them deposits, right? Mm -hmm. I love that you do that before you even meet the kids. Mm -hmm. Because I think that that really just sets the tone of, again, establishing that trust. Because some, we're, sometimes it's hard when you get to like, because you are going to have those kids that you're going to have to make a lot more phone calls right. for. You're right. You know? But to show that you're taking effort before to get to know the parent mm -hmm. so that you guys can be a partner before the kid even becomes a part of that equation. Yeah. Um, I think that's an incredibly powerful tool. And yes, it's going to take a little bit of time from your pre-planning or your summertime, but the it's important have to be 
long, an hour long each. No, you know? it's just a short, quick check in. Yeah. Well, also, oh, go ahead, Megan. Go ahead. I was thinking, I was just thinking back to like uh, when I'm making calls in the beginning of the school year, what does that look like? Traditionally, for teachers, they're a lot of teachers make phone calls in the beginning of the year. Yeah. But I love that you said what's so powerful that you flipped it to, it's not about, usually it's, okay, open house is going to be here. This is what yeah. they're going to need. We yeah. can't wait oh, to see you there. Okay. I just want to introduce myself. They'll be in my classroom. We'll give you all the information at open house on Monday. And it's kind of like a rushed, almost like just That's brief introduction. Really but you were like, I'm making time in this space for you. I think it's so powerful. And something I think a lot of teachers can implement easily. Black hopes that it is going to take more time, but putting right. that time in the beginning is going to be more powerful in because now they know, especially coming in as kindergarten, but any grade, oh, wow, she actually cares what I have to say because right. going through, that is going to only go downhill as they go through um, education is they're not going to have all that time for those things right. as they go a high school teacher is not going to have time to call all 100 and blank uh, parents. Yeah, I was going to say. And say yeah. that, oh, tell me about your child. That's not going to happen. It's unrealistic for a high school teacher to do that. But if in elementary school you can build that foundation, you're shaping the human and student at the same time, right. which is huge. Yeah. But even like with all the apps and things that we have nowadays, Correct. as a middle school teacher, and I know because I did it, I yeah. started my career in middle school, yeah. or as a high school teacher, just sending out that blanket message at the beginning. Yep. To everyone at the same time with all of these new apps that we have, like, I don't feel like there's an excuse there no, there's to not. be able to say, I can't do it. Right. Yeah. You're choosing not to right. do it um, because I think you have to be intentional about it. Yeah. Like, if we want significant learning to take place in our classrooms with our children, we have to have significant relationships. With our and in, with the ooh, caretakers. That on a t-shirt. Yep. With <laughs> the caretakers, with the students. Yeah. You know, we've... I've heard my entire educational career, they don't care how much you know or what you know until they know how much you care. Oh, yeah. How can I show them that I care if I'm not caring about the relationships with their caretakers, whoever that might be, and really showing them, I don't care what your family looks like because that's a hot topic right now. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't care what your family yeah. looks like. Yeah. I just care about you. Correct. And I care about what you're bringing to the table and like continuing to make those deposits. It can't be a one-time thing. No. Like, you have to be intentional about that. So every week, another, you know, just another like deposit that we can put in, yeah. like go ahead and have your sticky notes in your planner teachers, like go ahead and have that written out where, you know, these three kids, I'm making a positive phone call Correct. at the end of this week. Yeah. I'm going to take 15 minutes during my planning time. I'm going to call their caretaker, whoever that is, their families. And I'm going to say like, Hey, they did this this week and I'm proud of them. Just wanted you to know, celebrate them this weekend. Yeah. yeah. And you know, I mean, that is just so powerful in the fact that right now in every school that I walk into and Every time I do this one activity where I have teachers list what is taking their time, and we're going to get into really the heart of this, which is what we want parents to know. But I think this is important. I ask them what the number one factor is or what the number one thing is taking their time. And do you know what it is? Mm -mm. Classroom management. Yep. Behavior. Behaviors. Which makes perfect sense to me because then when I say, okay, talk to me about that. What does it look like? What does your relationships look like? It's always, well, I don't have the time mm -hmm. to do what I want. So I'm going, okay. Well, what are we doing? To, it's not. What are you doing instead? I'm just going to call because the flip side is all about just saying things how we feel. It doesn't mean that everybody else has to feel the same way. So this is how I feel. Classroom management is not a product of COVID. It is not a product of the pandemic. It is not a product of parents. As, par as parents, we can always do better. I'm, you're a parent. I'm a parent. Like we can always do better. But let's call it what it is. The biggest issue with classroom management right now is that teachers are prioritizing so many other things ahead of relationships. Agree. And I know, I know, I know we have a lot on our plate and I know that teaching is hard, but if we are not intentionally pouring time into the things that matter, you're exactly right. We will not have a significant impact. So for me, I'm going, okay, the, when as teachers are we going to maybe say the issue is us, that we are part of the Ooh. problem? And that is hard because I never want teachers to feel like you're not enough. But in that, we have to also say... It's being aware. It's the accountability. Yeah, being aware. It's being accountability and awareness. It's being aware. And so I'm going, okay, if I'm having this behavior, I would rather take the time and create a constant streamlined communication with the parent. I cannot blame the parents if I do not have constant communication with them. Can you say that one more time? Right. <laughs> so, I mean, and I know that, that that's going to sting for some people because you're working so hard and you're still not able to get the results that you want to see and you're still having classroom management issues but there, 
if you want different outcomes, you are going to have to do things that are different. Yeah. And you're going, I love that you said, you're going to have to do things that make you uncomfortable. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's exactly what, cause my, my middle school hat comes on, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. uh, it's easier when you're self-contained and all of those things. But really when you're teaching all those kids, I mean, and I had forgotten that, that I did this when I would have the beginning of the school year, when my parents would come with the middle school, eighth graders would come in and see my classroom or whatever, or the parents are coming up. I'd have a list at the front. They would write their name. They could write their phone number if they wanted to. They could write their email address. And it was an easy way for me just to text people. Right. And that's that's an easy way to communicate with parents then. And uh, also giving those good deposits like what you're talking about. But then also if, if something is going wrong or checking in or what, it's right there. Like, I will tell you one hard. shift that I would make as a parent now is I would do that very, I did not do that. And I wish I had in hindsight. Yeah. I wish that I had every parent's number because- when Maverick went to daycare for the very first time, it meant everything to me to receive one picture. As it, one, it changed, mm -hmm. like literally, it I settled could, my mm -hmm. uh, spirit every day. And I'm not saying that you have to text a picture every day, right? Right. Once a week, send parents a picture of their kids doing something, right? Doing so that would be one change that and I would it, make. And it was if they wanted myself. to, and everyone yeah. did. Like it wasn't right. even that. But yeah. I'd have like 90 to 100 phone numbers and. Well, a text I mean, takes 30 seconds to send. Let's be honest. It's yeah, like, it, it takes 30 seconds. And if Land our period. goal is all the same, like we're all on the same page, the end goal is that we want our children to be successful. That's the mindset. Right? Yeah. yeah. And I, so, also, I also think if you're listening to this, you're like, well, my district or my school won't allow that. There are other platforms that you can use. I know right. there are many districts that you cannot text or cannot use certain platforms. And email is still you're at the same right. exact premise there. So you can send an email with this or yeah. featuring that. And you so can set emails to up excuses. to yes. send at a certain time. Like if you have time, like on a random Saturday morning, sit down and send your emails for the week, have them set to send throughout the week. I mean, I just... Pri pri prioritize a, the systems. use of your yes. Yes. Prioritize the use of your habits. Time. If you systems do not have a habit. habit for communication, you will never be effective at it. And so if you have your habits in place, those are things that happen consistently. Five that's, minutes during your planning period, yeah. that's what you So do. this has shifted a little bit. Sorry. Sorry. No, 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 it's good. It's This is great. And I think this conversation is so important. I think we could have a, another follow-up episode about it. But I do want to shift back to, because we have talked a lot about communication, which is a right. key component mm -hmm. of what teachers want parents to know. If we're not communicating mm -hmm. that narrative, parents will make their own narrative or kids will create their own narrative. And then you're not speaking they for They sure yourself, will. You know? <laughs> so... I, we could talk all day about what you tell your parents and, and what you what information you provide them. And But I'm just curious, is there anything or things that you are like, man, I would just love to say this to parents, but because of how society would see it or because it would be frowned upon or because somebody might think a certain something about it that you're like, if I could just either communicate this concept, this idea, or I actually would love just to be able to say this to parents like this. Or just because there hasn't been a right time right. to say that. Right. Or it would be taken a thousand different directions. What is it that you would like to say to parents as a teacher? And kind of, not just from you, being, but you spend a lot of time with educators because not only are you a teacher, right. you're a huge lead on our Magic Squad team. So you're interacting with, again, hundreds of educators in that capacity. You're at all of our conferences. You're, you're influential in your school building. You hear a lot of things. So not only in so, your school. Yeah, from but. not only from your perspective, but just as teachers, do you think there's anything that we are withholding or kind of taking off the table because of the current, you know, current systems and society, current statuses and whatever, um, or just because we're afraid of how that would be perceived? I think a lot of teachers are just afraid to be real. Like, they're just afraid to be honest. Why? Who am I? Because they don't want to be judged. You know, like we live in a society that is so quick to throw stones mm -hmm. without looking in. Cancel culture. We are. We are a huge cancel culture. And I hear so many teachers saying like, I'm so afraid. Like I'm afraid to be real. I'm afraid to be honest. I'm afraid to show what I do on the weekend or I'm afraid to go to dinner and have a glass of wine because what if someone sees me? Mm -hmm. Like, can we not just be real? Um, yeah. normalize that teachers are normalize real. Normalize it. And not to like bring this in at all, but to be real in this moment, like I'm a part of the LGBTQ plus community. Yeah. Yeah. And that has been a huge hot topic. Like don't share that with your families. Yeah. Have you been Why? told that? Yes. Mm. So many times. And I struggle. Year five, I was going to leave education mm. completely, like change careers because adults are cruel. Mm -hmm. 
people that I worked with, um, Mm -hmm. individuals. And I had to find a place that was accepting Mm -hmm. of every part of who I was. Mm -hmm. Because the amount of children that I have seen throughout my career that have faced the same thing. Mm -hmm. Our kids, like, they see a lot of things. And if we're not being real and we're not being authentic and we're not being ourselves, we're robbing our children Mm -hmm. of that potential to also be authentic and be themselves. Be safe. Yeah. Yeah. So I think what I hear you saying is what if you would say to teachers, to parents from a teacher's perspective, that we're human too. Like we, yes, ha- there, there's a real person behind this persona. Right. And I think it's often, you're not a character. You're not, a, not character. a character. You're not a puppet. It is not a, yeah, it is not a stereotypical no. character that you're in a role in a show. You like yeah. have a personal life. You have family. You have friends. And I have, have things, things going on are, too. But... And you struggle with things too. Yeah. Like it is, there's no, I think a lot of times, and this is just our profession as a whole, there's this expectation of like perfection. That the like, standard, yes. Uh, uh, the standard is here. Like I should hear from my teacher every week via email, via this, via this. And if it's not met, it's almost like, well, they're not doing this because my first grade teacher did this, but the second grade teacher's not doing this. And there's like mm. this comparison of right. as they go through, I am not the same. And I've said this many times to parents, I am not that second grade teacher. You know, it would be a great question for parents instead of again, always just like, um, information about their kids because I do think that is important. But what makes a great teacher to you? Yeah, that's and a great finding question. Out what is it, what do they value in a teacher? Because I think that them being and don't just tell me like you know textbook answers. I really need to know in your perception what makes a great teacher, right? And it's not that, and it would be clearly communicated. It's not that I'm ever going to live up to your idea of a perfect teacher and there is none. So let's just squash that. Right. And I think having, and that's what I want this flip side podcast to be all about. I wish everybody in the educational community touching kids would have these conversations, yeah. right? Yeah. Because then it breaks down all walls and gets brings us all to the table. It's not a, you can't sit with us mentality. It's everybody should sit with us mentality. Yes. There's enough chairs. Yes. Correct. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, and if not, we'll invent chairs. We'll make chairs. We'll we'll make them. I don't care. Yeah. Just come to the table yeah. and have these conversations. But I think if we could break down the walls and just Again, approach parents with, I need to hear from you. What do you need? What do you need from me? What And not even so much, what in your eyes makes a great yeah. teacher? And then let's talk about that. And let's talk about what I realistically can do for you and your kids and what I can't. Because then parents go into it with a clear ex- of what they should expect versus having their own educational journeys, having their own perceptions of what education can be, listening to stupid social media and that politics works. and news. <laughs> But no, you and I, teacher to parent, have had a conversation of, what do you expect from me? Now let me tell you what I'm going to be able to do mm-hmm. and what I'm going to be able to provide. And it's not going to be every, and so, Yeah, no, no two, that's another thing <laughs> that I wish parents knew. No two teachers are the same. Just like Correct. if you have multiple kids in your household, no two kids are the same, no two teachers are the same. Nor should they be. How many people say like, you shouldn't do this in your classroom or you should do this or vice versa because another teacher is not going to do it. Yeah. Have you ever heard that? Oh, yeah. Like, One, I was thinking, yes, after that we're should talking not about be this, allowed to be a student. Literally, we had a powerful conversation with April all about homework on the podcast and what that looks like. And that was something for me. I did not, the teacher before gave homework every night religiously, would check it on Friday. It would be a packet of this. They sit down yes. for hours. I did not believe in that because it did not find benefit, especially as the reading teacher, like in math, there may serve a different purpose of what that looks like. Because I know my co-teacher Nikki would send homework for specific things. I did not find power in that because they're doing it wrong. They're not, I'm not helping them in any way. And it is wasting a whole lot of time at home for what it served me. Now, that's not to say that another teacher doing it is not serving a purpose, but parents would say, well, where's the homework for this? There, or they there think is, that you're a read, bad read. teacher Correct, or a not effective because yeah. you're not assigned. That's just one example of many things in education. Yes, I'm glad where you brought there's that these up. Kind of expectations is, yeah. for the teacher. Yes. That is, it's not a real thing. Like, it's not a real thing. And actually, you can find research to support anything. So, just because it's been yes. done in the past does not mean that every teacher needs to do it the same exact no. way. Let the teacher be the professional. Right. And adjust that needed. Let them make their professional. If you go to a doctor, there's a lot of times that you go and get a second opinion for things because somebody's going to treat something a different way than that other doctor would for the same same Mm -hmm. issue, Yeah. right? So let teachers prescribe what they think is best for that Mm -hmm. year and then trust 
trust the trust. fact that they are the professional, yeah, right? Well, it. we all have grandmas in here. Like how many times have you asked grandma for a recipe <laughs> and they've said like, I don't have one. Like I just cook. Correct. Right? Yeah. And so every single time we create that recipe, it's not going to be the same thing. Right. Oh, Wade never makes the same thing twice. It's because I don't have a grandma. <laughs> That's not actually funny. I wasn't laughing at that. I was laughing at that you didn't. I don't. But that's why. But then you throw, two, make a then you throw things yeah. in there. I still don't think you would create the same recipe. No, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if the grandma thing has the plural in it. I think it's just you open the fridge and whatever's in there is what's making it out to the <laughs> crying pan. That's that's how we cook. He doesn't have a grandma, but now he has a Pamela suit. Right. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So shifting the conversation a little bit on what this looks like as we kind of wrap up this conversation, I want to talk about the flip side of parent communication. We talked yeah. about all ways to make those deposits. What happened? If something's happening in the classroom, student is not making expectations, teacher is now calling home or sending an email or setting up a conference, what do you want parents to know when that does happen? Because that does have to happen. And for some students, right. it happens often. And if right. you're a teacher, you know, you know, right, that you're right. going to, you have these expectations, they're not being met. So you want to communicate that. And I've had many parents say, Every time oh, this teacher called me again, especially as an assistant principal, I would have them call me and say, this teacher keeps calling me every day saying that they're not doing this. The teacher's trying to be consistent with the expectation and right. build this. But what do you want parents to know? Because there's also a teacher side of it of how are we presenting it? Are we solutions based or are we just kind of saying this is what it is? Are we trying to get to the problem? Or are you just kind of letting your like tattling almost on what their child did, which right. they know how their child acts most likely. But what do you want parents to know from a teacher side when there is that negative or tough conversation? What would you want parents to know about that in that moment? Number one, I want them to understand that that one negative doesn't take away all the positive. Mm. Like mm. it doesn't shape my opinion of their kid or change how successful I think and know that they're going to be. Mm -hmm. Right. And we all have those days where we all have those moments and that's okay. But how can we as a team, because we are a team with the parents, with the families, how is we, how can we as a team work to put this child back where they need to be? Mm -hmm. Like I see the best in them the same way you see the best in them as their family, mm -hmm. as their caretaker. So what can we do to get them back mm -hmm. on the right track? Yeah. And maybe it's something that I've done as a teacher, like, Maybe it was something that triggered them. How can we just come up with that solution? Yeah, and I think that open, vulnerable conversation of this is coming from a place of, place of love, this is coming from a yeah. place of how do we make it solutions-based is so critical that yeah. parents kind of receive that. Because I know it is, and I'm sure as a parent, getting a call every day at 11 a.m. when that child comes to your class that they're doing this or that. Right. At some point, that is going to be exhausting. Yeah. Um, and I've had from the leadership side, parents going and say, this is the teacher's job, not mine. So tell them to stop calling me when really it's trying to that that partnership that right. it's going to take more than just the teacher. And you have to, to support, again, have that conversation of we're in this together. Yeah. yeah. We're all in this. Yes. Right. yes. Cute, Let's dance it out. High School Musical. Yeah. yeah. So, like we're all in this together. Enter and Zac Efron. <laughs> oh, really? Really? Let's with his, with his not with know. his old jawline, not his. Neck. <laughs> <laughs> it's somewhat frightening, honestly. Well, well guys, that, maybe that'll be just another aged, podcast. Okay, I maybe mean, he just had a glow down. No, he fractured his whole jaw. I mean, I, that's what they say. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's scary. I yes. mean, okay, keep. But going. just making sure that they understand, we want the same thing. Yeah. Like we we all want your child to be successful, and then also like just asking those questions of. Is there something going on? Yeah. Like, did you have a late night at home? Mm -hmm. Is that why they're cranky? Yeah. Or is grandma sick? Like, are parents feeling comfortable just to say that you know, we had, hey, here's a note. I would so appreciate that as a teacher. Hey, I just want to let you know. Oh, that, I love those. I know that I Maverick did not go to bed until right. 1 a.m. He was having nightmare, or we, mm -hmm. we had, to be honest with you, we did not have a good night as a family. You don't have to go into specifics. No. Knowing that it's powerful is incredibly for the day. powerful. It's because then if powerful. he's falling asleep, I know just to let him sleep because that's what he needs right now. Correct. Right? Yeah. So just, again, that open line of communication. And I think, too, us being honest, because we're not always our best either. I mean, right. I'm going to be honest. That's right. Every day that I walk into my classroom, I'm not a thousand percent. I want to be. Yeah. And I try to be. Mm -hmm. But there are some days where maybe I didn't sleep well or yeah. I come mm -hmm. in not feeling well or there's a lot on my plate that week that there normally isn't. And so just also being honest with that and just 
being honest with families like, hey, there's a lot going on. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I just wanted you to know that we had an off day. But at the end of the day, I still love this student. I, yeah. I still care about them. And I still. Yeah. And, I, and, and as teachers, I mean, we talked about this earlier, just the good deposits. We, we, we got to give those parents those small wins, too, during that time. If, if that student is struggling leading up to that. Yeah. yeah. Instead of the 11 a.m. negative one, right, yeah. you're sending an 11 a.m. Hey, saw the day tried this today. All right, and let's two, go. Look I for think, it. You know, just within that communication, this is actually something personal that I've had to learn in a marriage is don't respond when you're emotional. Oh, no. Because emotional responses, like, okay, fine, type it up. If you feel like you need to send it right, then type it up, but just keep it in your inbox. Don't be reactive. And and then go back and, yeah, edit it before you actually mm -hmm. send it because then you've, able to, you've been able to get everything off your chest, but then you're like, okay, this isn't going to be, this isn't going to bridge a gap. This is going to cause more of a divide. But also don't assume I know. Yeah, like that's great. Don't react when you're emotional, but don't assume that I know either. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like, and we keep talking about that open line of communication, but Johnny may have come home and told you about an issue in class that I knew nothing about. Yeah. Like, let's talk. Oh, about that's it. a good point. Let's have yeah, that a conversation. That happens a lot. Or maybe yeah. Johnny came to school and told me about something that happened at school. Yeah. We need to have that conversation. You know, like just. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. I yeah. think also important for teachers who are also parents to kind of in this community is parents, they're not going to know what they don't, they're not in the world of education. Right. They have their own career that they're the experts in they know about. Yeah. They're not going to know everything wow. that a teacher wants to know or should know, or should I tell the teacher? Should I not tell the teacher? Is it too much? So I think as teachers who are also parents to be advocates within that community, because you have your parent friends that are probably right. in the same class or the same school community or things like that and spreading that awareness and not making it a teacher's versus parents, but yeah. helping your parent friends who are not in education on this is what teachers really want. Like if you're listening to this as a teacher, right. you still have power to kind of make that impact. Even if you're not a parent of your parent friends or this, Hey, this would be great for your teacher. Or this would be really helpful for your teacher. Or have you tried this? Like offer a coaching kind of perspective yeah. or, to your friends yeah, that are there or on the flip side. If you have, Children in your classroom who do have teachers as don't assume. Oh, correct. That yeah. they know what's oh, happening, they know what's too. going on. I, like oftentimes, wow. I found the teachers' kids. No, they, yeah. That's there's the biggest disconnect there. Yeah, because they're worried about thirty other kids, correct. and they're putting right. theirs as thirty one after yeah. that because they're like, I'm worried about all this conference. Like that's a oh, we're in the same building. It must be happening. D make sure to really be intentional about that too. So just for the Cliff Notes versions, a lot of things <laughs> that I have picked up here because we've had some great deep there conversation is number one. It's a matter of establishing, I'm not the teacher that your child had last year. Let's just go ahead and lay that yep. down. Oh, that's good. Right? Yep. I'm not your child's teacher. From, I'm, I'm new. I have my own set of strengths, my own set of weaknesses. I'm going to operate differently, do things differently, but trust that I have the best interest of yep. your child. That's the core of all teachers. Yeah. We're all very different. We have the best interest of children at heart. Yep. So I'm not your child's teacher last year. Number two, what in your eyes makes an effective teacher? I want to know from you. And then now let's establish some clear communication about what I'm going to be able to do and what I'm not going to be able to do. But also within that, please respect too that I am a human being, mm -hmm. that I have, again, my own strengths, my own weaknesses, my own things that I struggle with. I'm going to have great days. I'm going to have good days. I'm going to have horrible days. But at the end of the day, we're all on the same team. Yeah. But to be on the same team, it takes humility on both sides. It takes grace in both directions. It takes realistic expectations on both sides. But if we can break down the walls and start here fresh with open lines of communication, the uh, things that could happen in classrooms, oh, absolutely. The teachers, we're missing the mark in education, right? Mm -hmm. now. Yeah. We're missing the mark. There's parents in their silos. There's teachers in their silos. And for some reason in many schools and classrooms, there's not that bridge to connect. We've got to build the bridge. The bridge just doesn't, we don't just say, oh, we want a bridge. It's and it's there. there. And add some family yes. involvement nights. And like, oh, that yes. checked off the right. box. But yes. what does it actually do to right. build that connection? It's not seeing results. Right. Stop wasting your time. Okay. Because those community events, honestly, a lot of times are a waste of time because if there's not a foundation in place, those community events can't do what they need. Or, to do. or next steps for action of what, how does this go past yeah. 8 p.m. on Tuesday? Like what yeah. is right. happening yeah. next for that? Right. They often check a box. I also think that kind of openness is huge. Yeah. And knowing that the expectations are going to be different for different students, different, like you're doing the best, the teachers are doing the best they can at that they moment. Can. Yeah. And the parents aren't respecting that on both sides instead of being the first to make judgments or say different things on both right. sides of that. But, of and this leads into the next episode. However, if a parent brings something to you that their child says or that they feel, everybody's feelings should be heard right. and validated. Trust yes. what they say. It doesn't mean that we just let them create the narrative. 
But we also, in open lines of communication, which is what next episode is going to be all about, we also have to, as, and that's the hardest part. This is human work. Human work is the hardest work, right? It is. Because you have to be receptive of 25 different parents and their ideas of what their child deserves and what you're doing. That's a lot. That is too. a that's lot. Overwhelming. That that is, yeah. yeah. But you have I to just practice. Really but you yeah. have to practice. If you don't make the choice to practice, right. like you said you're actively not doing it. You have to practice just, on not taking it personally. Just yeah. try. That's actually a try. Choice. It is a choice. It's a choice. Mm -hmm. now, you have to be intentional. You have to be intentional. You have to, it takes practice. It takes grace. It takes acceptance. It takes knowing who you are confidently, mm -hmm. right? But if that is not happening and occurring, then we'll never, we'll mm -hmm. never have clear lines of communication. And it's always going to be a divide and a divisive side of who thinks that they're being the best for that child at that right. time. Um, it takes work. And, and just remembering that, like, that one moment doesn't define as one moment the entire story. That's right. right. That's right. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Well, Megan, yeah. thank you so much for such a oh, so good. conversation. The voice of teachers here will have to have you back on the couch sometime soon. But for everyone listening or watching, if they're watching on YouTube, mm. tell them where they can follow you for more all things um, sparkling and kinder world. And yes. All things <laughs> yes. Um, do it too. But tell them for all things sparkles, fashion, kindergarten, teaching, all it's things. It's just real. It's okay. authentic over yeah. here. Like, there's a little bit of everything but you can find me on instagram at sparkling underscore and underscore score did i mess that yeah, up i think you did right yeah, yeah underscore between each of the words yeah right? yeah sparkling in kinder world yeah so there you go. um come over if you want a little scoop of real and authentic yes, come chaos. The sparkles of kinder world Thank you once again, Megan, for joining us. This is just part one of our three-part series, like we talked about. Part two next week is all going to be about what parents want it's teachers gonna to know. It's going to challenge you. So it's going to challenge gonna you. Flip the Script is another powerful <laughs> conversation, yes. so make sure you tune in next week for that. But until then, we will catch you next time on The, the Flip, flip side. side. Bye, guys. Nice.